This video is sponsored and approved by Oasis Games. Sponsored and approved? What's going on here, Jingles? Have you finally sold out? Well, you could look at it that way. Or you could look at it another way, because you wouldn't believe the number of times in any given week games developers approach me and offer to pay me to do a video of one of their new and upcoming games. Up until now, I've refused all of the offers because, well, call me old-fashioned, but I just don't feel right taking money from a games developer if I'm not in a position to honestly be able to say that I like their game and I'm prepared to recommend it. So far, I think my scruples have cost me something in the region of $40,000 from games companies that have offered to pay me to do videos on their games. Up until now, because finally... Tiger Knight Empire War from Oasis Games is the first time somebody's offered to pay me to do a review of their game, and I am able to actually honestly say, you know what, this is pretty good, and I definitely recommend it. So what's the game all about? Well, you can click the link down below in the video description and have a go for yourself, but essentially it's a free-to-play... It's kind of difficult to describe, really. It's kind of like Mount and Blade, except with the sort of World of Tanks-style tech tree bolted onto the background. I'm going to flash up the tutorial, which is actually rather good for a pre-release early access game, and we're going to take a look and see how it all works. Players of first or third person perspective shooters are going to be right at home with the control system WASD to move. They're obviously not trying to reinvent the wheel here. And if you want to charge for a short burst, then just double tap the W key. So far, so straightforward. And this is where we come across our first enemy. Right, he obviously needs his head kicked in. And since we have a shield equipped, we can block. And when you have a shield equipped, you block just by holding down the right mouse button, making sure the shield is actually pointing towards the person who's trying to kill you. Once we've dispatched him with the left mouse button, we can hold down E to deliver the killing blow. Hurrah! Oh, hang on a minute. He's got a friend with him. And we're going to need a ranged weapon to take him out. So, I'm going to press 2 to switch to my bow. After taking the shot on the shield. And bingo. It's all pretty straightforward. There's absolutely nothing here that should take experience. First or third person shooter players by surprise. Oh, hang on a minute. Cavalry. Well, I'm going to need a spear for this, and here's one that I just happened to have prepared earlier. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Have some of that sunshine. Different weapons for different circumstances. Still, it doesn't seem exactly fair that they get horses and we don't. Oh, hang on a second. Yes, we do. Yep, Tiger Knight has mounted combat as well. You can be a mounted archer, or in this case, a mounted spearman charging down and carving up the poor bloody infantry with reckless abandon. You can even knock them over just by riding right into them with the horse, but, well, it's more fun carving them up with your long cavalry spear. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking that this all looks pretty basic and there doesn't really seem to be a lot to it, but there is actually a lot more going on than you might first imagine, because the attacks that you make are entirely context-sensitive. They don't just depend on what weapon you're using, but they depend on what side of you the enemy is, what specific movements you're making with the mouse when you hit that left mouse button, and sure, you could just wade in, hammering the left mouse button, and probably do enough damage to put the bad guys down. But if you master the intricacies of the various different combat styles, you'll maximise your damage output and minimise your damage input. Like any good game, it's pretty simple to pick up, but the devil is in the details. Just as an example, the game even goes so far as to model the different effects and effectiveness of various different types of weapons, i.e. stabbing, slashing and crushing, against various different types of armour. Cloth, quilted, padded, leather, mail and plate. Yeah, sure, you can do some damage slashing away at somebody with a longsword if they're wearing plate armour, but you'll get much, much better results if you switch to something like a halberd or a two-handed hammer. Now, I must apologise if I've misled you here, because so far all we've really talked about is one-on-one -on -one combat, and this game is not about one-on-one -on -one combat. This game is about massive, bloody brawls between mounted and dismounted troops, with you leading from the front. And that's what makes this game special. Remember, this is all just part of the very basic initial tutorial, of which there are a huge number of different tutorials in this game. I don't actually have direct command of my troops just yet. I mean, they're 
riding around, attacking targets of opportunity with or without instructions from me. Command of the troops, that's going to come later. I do recommend that if you're going to give this game a shot, and hey, why not, it is free to play after all, that you do take advantage of the fantastic number of tutorials that are available. Uh, which is quite impressive given that the game is in early access. This is pre-release and they've already got a full and comprehensive set of tutorials in there to coach you through the various different intricacies of the game mechanics. And it can get quite intricate. I mean, yes, alright. In Tiger Knight, as in any other game of this type, you can probably do okay just by heading straight towards the nearest enemy and repeatedly mashing your left mouse button. You probably won't do particularly well but you might be able to do well enough. But, as in certain other very, very popular multiplayer combat games that I may have been known to feature on my YouTube channel from time to time, if you do make the effort to actually figure out what's going on and how it all works, you will be able to do so much better. But, excellent and comprehensive though the tutorials may be, there's only so much of them you can do before you want to get out there and spill some virtual player blood. And so, like me, before too long, you're going to find yourself in your very first multiplayer PvP team battle in Tiger Knight Empire War. And this was it. Now, don't be like me the first time you play Tiger Knight Empire War against other actual players. Actually take the time to read the mission description, because I'd realised that this was a siege of some place in China, but I hadn't bothered to take note of which side I was on. <laughs> so I thought... I was attacking the fortress. I mean, I spawned outside the walls. Oh, hang on a minute. The rest of my team are inside the walls. How did they get in there? Why am I out here? Oh, hang on a minute. If, if my team are inside the walls, that must mean I'm defending. Which means... Oh, look! <laughs> it's a siege tower. Right, these are the bad guys. And oh, look, there's a battering ram. Okay, um, those must be the bad guys. So, I'm going to give charge orders to my regiment, and we're just going to pile right in there. Yeah, you have some of that, my son. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get them. Where are you going? I think they're following me. Oh, and there's the enemy commander. Now, stay still, you bugger. I want to hit you with my... <laughs> there we go. Got him. <laughs> Um, I never claim to be any good at this game, I should... <laughs> I should hasten to make that obvious from this point on. Um, we've managed to dismount that fella and kill him, which is fantastic news. But that wasn't the commander, that was just his adjutant. The commander is down there in the middle of a melee. So, he needs to die. And it's all getting very messy. What's an adjutant? Good question, glad you asked. Um, the adjutant actually determines the orders that can be given to your unit. And crap, my horse has just been killed underneath me. Right, block, block, block. Get clear of the melee. Get clear of the melee. Okay, yes. Uh, you can hire various different adjutants to issue orders to your troops. And the adjutant that you've hired determines the different types of orders that you can actually give to the regiment under your command. Obviously, the more expensive of the adjutants have a much, much wider range of commands that they can give. Can I? Screw it. Charge! I'm giving a charge order here to the troops. They're going to form up and hopefully knock this fella off his feet. Yeah, there you go! Have <laughs> some of this. Yeah, you like that, don't you, bitch? <laughs> the troops are rallying to defend me. Good boys. Fantastic stuff. And it is all getting very, very messy. But it's fun. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for the charge order to come off cooldown so I can use it again. Because, well, as you can imagine, if you've got a regiment of pikemen all lined up shoulder to shoulder and you charge an enemy with them, you can inflict a lot of damage. I'm doing all right so far. I've lost about half of my health. But this guy's on his last legs. We've separated him from his troops. Come on, boys, finish him off. Hey, that hurt. Stop, stop it. What are you doing? Yeah, we've got him surrounded. He's staggered. He's attempting to block. But, oh, he's killed one of my boys. I knew his mum. <laughs> all right, all right. Can we charge him again? Come on, boys. 
There we go. That should do it. Get in there. Hoo ah! Yep, that staggered him, knocked him off his feet again and again. Finish him off. Don't let him get up. I mean, he's up, but don't let him recover. Yes, he's down. We've got him, and I'm going to dispatch him. Yeah, there you go. Who's a badass? <laughs> And that, at its essence, is the core of the gameplay of Tiger Knight Empire War. You create a character, you, well, you pick a faction, you create a character, uh, you hire an adjutant, you equip your troops, and then you go out and you stomp faces with them. You do it very, very well if you bother to play through the tutorials, or you make a bit of a mess of it. <laughs> and, uh, and if you're going to succeed, it's more through brute force and ignorance if you haven't bothered to play through the tutorials. So... I actually did okay out of that game, considering it's the very first one that I played. I mean, I ran into another enemy general and got my ass handed to me. But I picked myself up. Well, I didn't. I respawned, this time inside the walls. And thanks to the uh, melee that I'd fought outside, it had delayed the attackers long enough that they couldn't get to the gates in time to force them and get inside, where we had a regiment of archers waiting for them. So they weren't able to force the walls, and that was a successful defence. So, Tiger Knight Empire War. It's been likened to Mountain Blade's Asian cousin, and, well, on the surface at least, there's definitely a lot of truth in that comparison. The core gameplay elements, pick a character, lead a regiment of troops into battle, are pretty much exactly what you can expect to see in a game like Mountain Blade. And Mountain Blade's been around forever. But the thing that Tiger Knight does that Mountain Blade doesn't, and that sets Tiger Knight apart from the competition, is what happens between the battles when you're back in the barracks. You see, fighting these battles actually has a purpose other than the immediate thrill of stomping somebody into the mud. You earn experience and you earn money, and you can use that experience to unlock new troop types. And you can use that money to buy the equipment that you've researched, not just for them, but for your general as well. Players of games like World of Tanks or World of Warships will be right at home here. We tend to start off with village militia equipped with cloth armour. Armour's probably too strong a word for it. And farming implements that have been fashioned into makeshift weapons. But it doesn't take you long at all to upgrade those into something slightly more suitable for a hardened fighting force. When the game first appeared in early access, there were three factions available to choose from, all based on ancient Chinese warlord factions. You have the Wei, the Shu, and the Wu, which probably doesn't mean an awful lot to anybody from the Western Hemisphere. However, on the 17th of February, with the first major update to Tiger Knight, a fourth playable faction was introduced into the game. You can now choose to fight for the Empire of Rome. If you've ever found yourself playing the Rome Total War series of games, and you've sat there wondering what it would be like to actually be the Centurion or the Tribune in command of one of those cohorts of Roman legionaries, well, look no further. This is it. The February 17th update didn't just introduce Rome as a playable faction, although, you know, <laughs> that would have been enough. But it, it also fixed a lot of what would have been my only real source of criticism about the game. And they were twofold. Number one, the hilariously bad translations. <laughs> <laughs> but given the situation, you can kind of understand and forgive that. And to be completely honest, the hilariously bad translations were more amusing than annoying. You could still figure out what it was the game was trying to tell you. And you can kind of appreciate that, coming as it does from a Hong Kong Chinese games developer, um, with China being the primary market for the game, um, us here in the West up until now, have been a bit of an afterthought, and they probably had far, far more important things to spend their time and development money on, like stamping down gameplay bugs, than hiring professional voice actors and professional translators to translate the Chinese into the English. Well, the February 17th update didn't just introduce the Roman Empire, it also fixed and corrected a lot of the more amusing of the translations, and I think I'm going to miss them, <laughs> because they were quite funny. However, one other thing that the February 17th update has done, which is of far more significance, is it has streamlined and refined the user interface in the barracks. All that part of the game where you're not actually out there on the battlefield stomping people's faces into the dirt. It was an utter nightmare trying to figure out what did what and who went where. But the February 17th update 
has made vast improvements to the user interface. It's now a lot easier to figure out exactly what you're supposed to be doing in order to get stuff researched and equipped between battles as you get ready to play your next game. So with that February 17th update that introduced Rome, cleaned up the interface and corrected the more hilarious of the translations, there really hasn't been a better time to get into this free-to-play game from Oasis Games. And I'm very, very happy to, at long last, finally be in a position where I can, in all good conscience, take money from a developer to do a video about their game and still honestly be able to say that it's good, I recommend it, I've had fun playing it, and I'm pretty sure you will too. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.